Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today we are going to be doing a lot of watercoloring. Um, so you guys all know that I have a super busy schedule, three jobs, mommin, two dogs, it's crazy in this house. Uh, so today I am using the Everything Wonderful. This stamp set is actually illustrated for Honeybee Stamps by my wonderful friend Emily Midget, who is just endlessly talented, not only in illustration, but also in card making. If you have not seen her stuff here on um, Honeybee, or you haven't seen her stuff, which is Six Street Sundries, pretty sure that's her blog, um, I will link it below because she is amazing. She's an amazing watercolorist, colorist, and um, just an all-around just really great person. So if you haven't checked her out, you definitely should. Anywho, back to the card. I am stamping this on Canson watercolor paper. I use the Monteval Aquarelle, don't mind me about my camera, sorry. Um, and I am stamping in ink on three because I wanted to do a no-line coloring look. Um, so I did stamp it twice because it just makes it easier for me to see. Plus, I didn't get a great impression the first time around because I was a little bit too lazy to get up and, you know, stamp it with proper pressure. So here I just have, this is actually an alcohol ink um, palette by Tim Holtz. I use it for my Daniel Smith watercolors. Uh, it's super easy and wonderful to use. Just close the lid when I'm done, they dry, and then I reactivate them with just a little bit of like a drop of water when I am getting ready to start watercoloring again. Uh, and it just works really well for me. So I'm gonna zoom in here. I don't own an orange because I'm cheap. We've discussed this multiple times at length. And when I bought my watercolors, because Daniel Smith uh, watercolors are a little bit more pricey, uh, I just bought the, when I first bought them, I just bought the primaries. And so I, that way I could mix my own colors. Now, as I've realized that I do use them quite a bit, um, I have branched out and purchased um, a violet, a teal, things like that. But I did not purchase an orange because I'm still mixing my, wait for it, quidacridone rose. And <laughs> I think it's a Rulian is my yellow. Um, but anyway, so I'm mixing those just to create a orange-ish color. The way that I watercolor is I like to um, lay down a line of color. I'm using a number two round brush by the Silver Brush Company, by the way. Um, so I like to lay down a line of color where I want it to be the darkest. And then I will rinse off my brush. I will uh, blot off the excess at the base of the bristles and then go in with very minimal water to just blend that out. A big, big thing that people have trouble with with watercoloring is using far too much water. I think I told you this before, my friend Dawn um, showed me like that she watercolored this whole piece with just the amount of water that was in a water bottle cap. Um, so you really do not need a ton of water to make your pigment move. Um, and that's why I can work so quickly because I'm not putting down a ton of water. Those petals are drying relatively fast because you don't want to work next to two areas that are still wet. That's how you get the kind of like the blobby mess. If your areas are still wet, they will run into each other and you won't get the super nice line um, of separation between your petals and you need that in order for no line watercolor or really any kind of coloring to make sense. You need to have those um, shadows and highlight areas as well as have them separated from each other. So um, here I'm just, this is just going me at, at regular speed. I am going to speed it up so you can see the whole piece from start to finish um, just because it's a very long process. I think this entire, and this is a large floral bouquet. The piece of uh, watercolor cardstock I'm working on is actually four and a half by six. I'll trim that down after I'm done to a regular A2 size card, so four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, but I prefer to watercolor it when it's on the larger piece, just in case there's an area that I don't like, it doesn't, um, come out well or like I drop my paintbrush or things get muddy and I want to change my game plan and then trim it down I have that option um so anyway I am I am going to speed it up so that way we can see the whole thing and you'll notice that I do turn my paper 
it's just easiest for me. I'll also go back and go over other air. I'll go over the same areas again. This is just color layering so that I can get some more intense color where I want the shadows to be. Or because all watercolors dry much lighter um, than when you initially put them on. Sometimes I just thought the color was going to be darker than it was. And since it didn't get as dark as I wanted it, I needed to, to go back in and add um, another layer. So what has been going on in, well, we had Halloween. We did have Halloween. Um, so if you have been watching my channel, you know that um, Peanut wanted to go as a shark. And I wanted, well, I didn't want to go. I got told, basically. He wanted me to go as bait. And that translated into a fish, of which I tried. Um, it wasn't the best costume that I've ever put together, um, but it did get across the the fish idea-ish. Uh, and anyway, you couldn't see it under my winter coat because it was freezing here. So let's go back to the beginning. Peanut wants to be a shark, so I usually buy his. I've only made his costume once, and that's when we were dinosaurs, and it was like Friday the 13th nightmare. I'm not a... Um, I'm not a sewer. It's not something, I, I have very minimal sewing skills. And really most of those came from a combination of cross-stitching and a brief memory of home ec that I had my freshman year of high school. And within dating myself, that was over 20 years ago. Okay, so me and the sewing, we're not friends. So I was looking online for his costume. I did find one. Um, I found a several. I let him pick which one he wanted. We ordered it. It came and it was a toddler's small and it, my child was swimming in it. Um, I almost fit into it, honestly. It was very large. So I end up sending that back. We order another one. It's perfect. It's like kind of like a giant onesie without the feet. Um, and it has a hood on it and it's great, especially since we live in Ohio and the chances of it being cold on Halloween are excellent. Um, so his is all set to go. So I start looking online for mine and I can't really find anything that I love that's reasonably priced. Also, I think we've had this discussion before, a lot of women's Halloween costumes are meant to be very provocative. Again, I live in Ohio, so no, that's just not going to happen. It's just not, that's not happening. Also, I'm taking my child trick-or-treating. Like, it's not like I'm going to an adult trick-or-treating party. And to be quite honest, I don't even think I'd wear half this stuff, even if I was. Um, but nonetheless, so I typically have to modify mine even when I buy them. We're going to go to the card. So here I am. There's a rose petal that's turned over. This part should be very light, that diagonal piece I was just working on. Um, but I was kind of just in the zone and going through and, and making them all the same shade. And then here in a second, I'm going to get to another piece that's folded over and it's going to dawn on me that those should be lighter. So in order to remove some of that color, I just took a damp brush and swiped right over it, rinsed off, swiped it again to remove that color. Watercolor is very, very forgiving. So you're not married to it. If you're doing something and you're not liking the way that it comes out, um, either put a bunch of water on it and sop it up with a uh, paper towel that'll remove the majority of the color um, or just keep adding color to it because that will also work. So there, it's really very easy to, um, to rework. Don't get frustrated and just give up. Keep going. You'll, I, I would be surprised if you don't end up with something that you like if you keep trying. So anywho, back to the, um, the Halloween costume. So I was looking online and I found a couple of different costumes. Um, one of them had like a uh, tutu. It had like a little tutu and that was like the little fish um, like fins. And I was like, well, that's really cute. And I like tutus. Who doesn't like tutus? Um, and then I saw another one that had like arm, it was like arm bands and leg bands that were also acted like fins. And they were made out of um, almost like, it wasn't tool. That's what I ended up using to make mine, but it wasn't tool. It was some o other, maybe like an organza kind of fabric. Um, it was a very sheer fabric, and but this was one that you could purchase. Well, I'm not purchasing it. That's what I've decided. So I look up, like YouTube, hello, thank you, um, a no-sew tutu tutorial. Huh, 
say that three times fast. No, so too, too tutorial. Um, anyway, so I look that up and then I figure I can use the same type of concept for my arm and leg bands. Um, so that is what I ended up doing. I went to Joanne Fabrics. I purchased some tool, which is really very cheap. I think it's like a um, dollar or a dollar fifty for a yard. It's super cheap. And I bought, I was going to be a blue tang fish, like Dory. That was my original game plan because I had like royal blue pants and a long sleeve shirt that I could wear um, underneath my tutu um, to make, you know, so I wasn't freezing and also so my butt wasn't hanging out because that's important. That's goals. Um, so I, I went there and I bought the royal blue, black, and yellow tool. Well, then we had our Halloween fundraiser at work, and my sister, who's wonderful, came to help out, and she was telling me that she had a tutu that was royal blue, teal, and black that I could just borrow, and that I wouldn't have to make a tutu. So I was like, okay, like, let's do that. So then I went back to Joanne Fabrics and bought some teal um, tool to make that work. So I did just use my blue t-shirt. I cut out some felt. Um, I could not find teal felt that matched the skirt in the um, in Joanne's fabrics. So what I ended up doing was actually using the felt I had from um, another company. It was like craft felt that they had sent me. And it was the perfect color. So I ended up using that. So I did black and teal stripes on my blue shirt. And then... Um, the no so part of it, like the tutu and the, or like what would have been the tutu, but the armbands and the leg bands were really very easy. You just like loop it onto, um, we well have to cut your tool down obviously to whatever length you need. And then you just loop it onto a ribbon, just tie it on there. And it was super fast, not, I mean, it was a little bit tedious because you got to put so much on there to make it full. Um, but yeah, that was super quick and like, no effort it was just kind of mindless that's all which you know i neither here nor there we got it done so then halloween comes um i had to work that day my parents pick up peanut from school for me i come home i have to let the dogs out do their thing and then get myself dressed um with the armbands leg bands all that nonsense and then i painted my face blue well teal and then put like the blue scales on it um, along with, you know, some, a little bit more dramatic eye makeup than I would normally wear. Uh, nothing too crazy. And then went over to my parents, got peanut ready. Now I did buy him and I also was wearing, um, long johns because it was 48 and rainy. Uh, it had rained all day. It, the rain did let up a little bit. It was more like a cold drizzle but the wind picked up so much oh my gosh that wind was brutal guys it was so bad so I hope that you had much better weather uh than we did but we always um so full disclosure you guys all know that um I am divorced from Nathan's dad and but we still take him trick-or-treating together um, so that's something that we do. We both take him. So neither one of us miss out on that opportunity. Um, so he always wants to trick or treat with his cousins, which is fine. He has no young cousins on my side. He is the baby, um, of my parents' grandchildren. So, but on his dad's side, he is, well, he's also the baby, but he's closer in age. He's got like two eight-year-old cousins, a, no, two nine-year-old cousins, a, seven-year-old cousin and then himself um so he like he prefers to go trick-or-treating with them and I can hardly blame him it's probably a lot more fun to go with kids instead of just your parents so we go over to um his dad's sister's house and are you know doing the trick-or-treating thing and his other sister and their two kids are going to meet up with us later they live on a street that only has like six or eight houses but they're really close to their neighbors so they wanted to trick-or-treat their street before they came over um to trick-or-treat with us my is it my ex-brother-in-law I don't even know I guess that's what you call him whatever he nice enough guy but he decided he was going to dress up as Michael Myers 
for um, Halloween, from the Halloween movies, in case you're not well versed in horror films. I'm not really anymore. I was much better about it when I was younger, but I think I've pretty much just gotten over it as an adult. Uh, no judgment if you're into them, because I read about serial killers in my downtime. So there's that. Um, but Peanut was quite, uh, quite freaked out by the mask. He did not understand that it was Uncle Dave. He didn't like it. He was like, why would he do that? Why is he doing that? Why would he do that? And I was like, buddy, like, it's fine. It's just Uncle Dave. Like, it's, it's, I know that it looks creepy and it looks scary, but it's, it's just Uncle Dave. Um, so yeah. And then he was successfully scaring a, quite a few children on the street. Like, they were running from him. It was a really good costume. I will give him that. Um, but then, so, Peanut was a little bit upset because he had a spelling test the next day. Um, and his, I mean, it just is what it is. We trick-or-treated up until 8 o'clock. I still had to, you know, get him home, get him in the shower, get him a snack uh, before he went to bed and then do these spelling words. Um, so he was not able to go in and, like, sort his candy with his cousins. He was kind of bummed about that. Um, but I think next year Halloween falls on a Friday, so he should be able to do that. Or hopefully he doesn't have a test the next morning. That'd be grand as well. Um so yeah, that was pretty much Halloween on our end. It went pretty well. Uh, we did have to, like I said, layer up like crazy just because of how chilly it was. And then um, last night, uh, Eric actually was at work. Oh, somebody did a <laughs> somebody did ask on Facebook uh, if Eric dressed up as a fisherman, and um, he was at work, so he was telling people all day that his uh, costume was a disgruntled policeman, which is funny because that's his costume every day. Um, but so then last night he was working and Peanut was with his dad, so I actually got to stop it, hold the phone. I got to go out and have dinner with my friend what? Yes, I did. Um, I know that it's a rarity and it's something that I don't, I probably didn't even have time to go last night, um, honestly, but sometimes you just have to decide that that's what you're doing. I haven't seen her in a few months. She is a crafty friend of mine who our friendship has just grown um, to be very close friends uh, and it was really nice to go see her. We do bring our crafting things when we get together. So, like, we go in, eat dinner, and then basically unpack our, our crafting stuff. Since um, I was going to be sitting in a restaurant, like, I did bring things to do, things that I have wanted to do, but haven't really had any time to do because I have other um, commitments. I have other deadlines, other things that need to be met that it's rare um, that I get to just sit down and make something just to make it. And I, I don't want that to sound like complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm very, very blessed for the companies that I work with that let me pick and choose what products I want to use um, so that I don't ever have to be disingenuous. I don't ever have to uh, be in a situation where I'm going to use a product that I don't really love. Um, all of the companies that I work for are amazing and they will just say, you know, this is the stuff from the release, pick what you love, pick what speaks to you. Because in creating, uh, as I'm sure you guys know, if it's not something you love, it's so hard to use. It's just so hard to use. And when I first started way back in the day on design teams, there was all of these requirements um, that, you know, you use XYZ or they would only send you, um, you know, three things of of you know product and that's just what you were stuck with to use and it was exhausting I could not make anything that I liked I could not um come up with anything that was genuine or my style and so then I ended up quitting a lot of design teams and then from there on out whenever I agreed to work with somebody that was one of the first things that I would ask am I required to use you know xyz product and so I don't work for anybody who would require that um but anyway I have other things that I love that I buy um and just sit here and collect dust because I don't have time to use them and so I had taken watercolor with me because there was a set that I had that I really wanted to watercolor and I had not had the opportunity to do so. So that was part of what I worked on and then I was just really feeling the watercolor vibe. Um, it was very relaxing and I, 
just realized I hadn't done it in a very long time. And so that's how we got here. Um, this stamp set by um, Emily and Honeybee, I adored. She has another um, floral bouquet that came out with our fall release that I haven't even had a chance to use yet. It's amazing. Um, and they just really speak to me. It's very similar to my own um, floral style as far as like when I'm just sitting around um, sketching and things like that. She has a similar style to me which makes it like cake for me to use um, just because the images are so beautiful and they they hold themselves. So like this card I have no intention of putting a background behind it. I had no intention of I just wanted it to be clean and pretty and just this focus of this this floral bouquet that's what I wanted and that's what I did so um anyway doing that watercolor sitting there with my girlfriend is what prompted me to want to watercolor when I got home and Eric always teases me and says <laughs> that um whenever I have to do something quickly for a deadline is when I decide to watercolor because it takes so long <laughs> and so um actually when I was making this when he came over after work he was like so what was this one do like two days ago and I was like haha funny no actually I'm on time how about that um which is rare we've also previously discussed that I'm never on time for anything ever pretty much never not a responsible adult whatsoever um but yeah so that's basically what's been going on in my neck of the woods um i'm we're gearing up um you know for the next couple of holidays i have some time off around thanksgiving that i'm super excited about um just how okay real talk thanksgiving totally gets skipped and it makes me angry so the other day on my way to work um November 1st, okay, it, November 1st, first day of November, one day past Halloween, and I'm on my way to work, and they're playing Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. For real? November 1st, Mariah. Mm-mm, no. You need to stay in your lane, girl. It ain't your time yet. It ain't your time. We got a whole nother holiday to get through. Um, it just, with all of the shopping and the materialism and all of that like how Christmas is coming sooner and sooner and sooner uh, because obviously people want you to buy 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 um, but it drives me crazy because there's this whole thankful holiday you know where you're thankful for the things you already have not for the things that you need more that you need to accumulate um, that we're just like passing right on by like no big deal um, so I will not be, I will be making Christmas cards-ish, but I will also still be making some fall cards because I got to tell you, it's still fall. Um, so here I'm just going back in with the card and adding some of the detail lines. Uh, Emily's style is to draw very detailed. And I know that can be kind of overwhelming, but it doesn't need to be because this image is so beautiful on its own. You could just do one layer of color and it would still be stunning. Um, but since I did no line watercoloring, I wanted to make sure that I went back in and added those little details into the leaves to um, the roses. I had intended on going back and putting a highlight on the berries, but honestly, I just completely forgot about it. So here, I told you earlier I was going to have to trim it down, so I'm just going in um, and doing that. Um, so that it all, that, like I said, this is a very large floral image, so it spans the entirety of an A2 sized card. Now you obviously don't have to use the whole image. Um, Susan Weimer, who's another friend of mine, very talented, actually just did a card with this one on her blog where she only used part of it over some pattern paper, and that was super pretty as well. Um, but for the sentiment, this card actually will be mailed. Um, to somebody who um one of my friends their family member is having a little bit of a hard time right now going through some health problems and so this will be going to her the stamp set has lots of really good sentiments in it um like you are everything wonderful enjoy your day uh love you so you're the best uh, there's a sympathy one in there too which is great but this there's this one which says praying for you so i'm just going to be heat embossing this in gold um using some hero arts gold embossing powder i'm just going to heat set that so it is all smooth and shiny and metallic all things that good metallic embossing powder should be and then the next thing i'm going to do which is the last thing i'm going to add these I think it's mustard gold. Let me double check. Yeah, mustard gold crystal drops from Nouveau. 
um, just as an accent. So these do kind of need to be warmed up if you have them in a cold place. Um, I know some crafters put them in their bra. I just hold them in my hand for a while so that they're warm and they drop nicer. Here, this one kind of got like a little bit of a string. So I just used a scrap piece of paper to move that back into its little um, bubble. But because I'm using a lighter color, it wasn't terribly noticeable. I don't know how it would be with a darker color. I'm going to be honest. So then that's it. This is the entire card. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed story time and the watercoloring and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.